Hey guys, welcome to Radix Facts. Today I'm going to answer a question I got from Mark Friedman about my FAI machine. He was asking me just some basic stuff. He wanted me to go over sort of my paddle setup, my fly bar setup, ratios, blades, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a quick highlight of what I'm doing on my FAI machine, uh, my EMV. This machine I'm going to be showing you is actually the one I uh, managed to win last year's NATS with. Uh, it's a slightly older machine because I've been flying it a lot, but uh, it's still flying great. Uh, it's, it's a good setup. It's exactly the way I flew it at last year's NATS. And I'll just go over all the details with you. Okay, on my FAI machine, I guess the place I'll start with the blades. I'm actually running Radix 710 FAI blades. These are a special blade made for FAI. You can tell what they are just because of the gold coloring. Uh, these are about 230 grams. Uh, they're actually really good for speed kind of stuff too, but they work really well for FAI because they're a little heavier, they hover well, they sit well on the wind, they auto well, and they track really good at high speed. Uh, we can move down here to the paddles. I'm actually running some really old KSJ paddles. I got these years ago. Uh, these are about 40 grams. Uh, I actually hated them when I first got them years ago because it didn't match my setup at all. Uh, but on the e &V, it works really well. It sits really good, everything. Uh, I'm actually going to be working up a new set of probably some uh, new stubs for FAI, uh, but they're not out yet, so we're, I'm still using these. They're really good paddles. They were great last year. Uh, these are just some fly bar weights. We run them in and out to change the way it reacts in a hover. Uh, actually, with these heavier paddles, they work really well all the way in, so I just leave them. Uh, ratios, rotor head ratio, I'm actually running stock e &V ratios. Uh, it's about 0.72 on the head ratio, which means for every degree of fly bar tilt, you're getting about 0.72 degrees on the blades. Uh, that seems to really work well in wind conditions, matches these paddles well. Most of the model is basically stock. I'm running uh, 140 degrees CCPM. That seems to track better uh, in aerobatics, rolls straighter, uh, collective changes, elevator changes, you don't get any interaction on the ball on the swash plate. Doesn't, when you give ele elevator, you don't get any up and down on collective. It's just elevator is pure elevator. Uh, works great in the aerobatics. Um, all the basic gearing is the same, main gear is the same, tail gear is the same, all stock. I'm running a special fin. This is actually one a friend of mine, Don Curtis, made for me years ago, about 20 years ago. I used to use it on the Excels and I've converted it to use on the ENV. Uh, later this year we're going to have a special FAI fin for the ENV, uh, but last year I used this handmade one. I just repainted it green. Uh, using the 105 tail blades. Uh, again, all stock gearing, stock gearing ratios. Um, okay, that's the main overview of the model itself. Now I'm going to go and take the canopy off and show you what's going on the radio system. Okay, uh, this is my FAI machine with the cover off. Uh, let me see, basics, I'm running just a Thunder Power Lite 2600 LiPo. Uh, I run direct voltage to the total G. I don't use a step down to the total G. I just run direct voltage to my 8717 servos. Uh, I have that all around. Uh, I do run a drop down to the tail servo, uh, just so I don't over to the servo, but everything else is 8.2 volts. I really like that for FAI. It worked really well last year. Uh, the thing held, servos held up too well, ran great. Just running basic spectrum system straight into the total G. Now some might note that uh, you're not actually allowed to use a flight control system for FAI. Uh, this is actually a special total G that we have removed the sensors for aileron and elevator. We physically removed it. So it does not have a sensor on aileron and elevator in this total G. It was a special one. Uh, it's basically our FAI total G. Uh, it still makes everything nice and clean, but we're also still legal to use an FAI use. Uh, I'm also running a Castle 160 ESC. Uh, I've run the uh, 80s, I've run the 120s, and I've run the, the 160s. The 120 and the 160 seem really well matched for this size model. The 80 seems a little small. I noticed it didn't seem to work quite as well as the, the 120 and the 160. Um, again, all my gearing is stock. I'm running the uh, 520 limited edition Scorpion. And pinion, I was trying to remember. I'm either running a 12 or a 13 tooth pinion on a 130 tooth main. I've run them both before. They're both running fine. Uh, this is actually not the motor I ran at last year's Nationals. I actually ran the new motor last year. On the dampening system on the ENV, the, the dampers that come with the ENV are really suited for 3D flying. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard crush dampening. You stick it in the head and it crushes down into the head and then the crush shaft expands out and it, it basically preloads the damper. So it's, it's, it's a softer rubber, but it's firm and hard and good for 3D. For FAI, you really don't want the damper that hard. Uh, so what I do is I put the damper 
onto a cross shaft, just a bare cross shaft with damper on it, and then I sand down the OD of the damper until it just slides into the head block. So that gives me a much looser fit. The, the damper is already a lower durometer, like a 70 durometer, so simply sanding the OD, you can fine tune the dampening you want. Uh, and, and dampening, honestly, is kind of the art of FAI. I mean, everybody likes the dampening different. It, it'll, it'll vary depending on your paddles, it'll vary depending on your blades, your own personal preferences. So you just sort of sand it the way you like the feel. I like it a little looser on FAI, uh, so that in heavier winds, it, it tends to self-correct a little bit. Uh, if you get it too loose, though, it'll feel a little disconnected in aerobatics. So that's just sort of a personal feel. Uh, but you probably want to at least sand it down so that the, the, the damper sort of slides into the head block as a starting point for FAI. As far as the fly bar weights, what, the way I tune the fly bar weights is I actually sit out in windy conditions. And say if a wind's coming from your right, uh, as, as the wind comes in, the model should not tip into the wind or go with the wind. It should literally just stay as the wind hits it. If your fly bar weights are too light, the fly bar will actually tend to tip into the wind to make your model move toward the wind. That means you're, 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 you're actually too far in. The fly bar is overreacting to the wind. So you can actually move the fly bar weight out. If you're sitting there and it actually tips away from the wind, going away from the wind as the wind gust hits it, that means the fly bar weight's too far out. It's a little too heavy. So you actually need to move it in to let it react to the wind a little better to sit stable. The ideal situation is you get hit by a wind and it's just going to sit there. It's not going to go forward or back. So that, that's sort of what determines your fly bar weights. The other thing that might somewhat override that is some models like it way out to really sit, but then when you go up to the aerobatics, you don't have enough roll rate. So then you've got to kind of compromise on what's the best overall set. Mine actually sits well both ways. That's why I like this setup with these paddles with these blades. It'll sit well on a wind, but it's still plenty of roll rate. Uh, one other thing a lot of guys have asked me about is what is this weight? <laughs> it's going to be hard to see it. There it is. I've got an extra weight on the grip here. Uh, honestly, what that is, is I tried, because the, the ENV can run both fly bar and fly bar, so it has two holes on this grip. Um, one day, just for the heck of it, I said, well, heck, let's just weight up the leading edge of the grip and see what happens. Um, in the end, I found in gusty air, I actually prefer the way that flew. Uh, it seemed to bounce a little less, cyclic seemed to sit a little better. Um, I have all kinds of crazy theories on why that may be. Honestly, I'm not really sure uh, what the real reason is, but I do prefer that. I like a little bit of weight on the leading edge. Uh, another thing I tend to do is I run uh, no delta on the head. I tend to zero out the delta. This is our regular fly barless ball. I, and so instead of the stock fly bar, which tends to go straight down and is shorter with delta in it, I tend to run zero delta. And the reason is, is because as soft as I like to run the dampening, if you have a lot of delta, you tend to get a lot of interaction with a lot of pivot in the aerobatics. And for FAI, I don't tend to like that. I like to run zero delta, so even as this pivots, it doesn't give you an interaction. Now on 3D, when you're running a really tight head, it tends to move very little, very little. So the little interaction you're getting there actually is kind of good. It's usually somewhat compensating. But in this case, it's moving so much, I tend to find it overreacts. So I like it either zero or very slightly off zero. Uh, but generally moved in. Again, that's just from our fly bar list, so you can just put our fly bar list ball on that. Now, as for the fin, which we discussed earlier, the way you determine the fin size is you fly in fast forward flight. I actually like to do about a 45 degree angle dive as you're going through the air and then pull out at the bottom. As you pull out, the model should just go flat and stay. If, if you, when you pull out, it kind of porpoises or, or tends to bank and pull back up again. Uh, one, either you have unstable blades, but if, if you're running these, that won't be an issue. But uh, if it tends to porpoise as you pull out of it, then your fin is probably not big enough. You need it for the fast forward flight stability uh, to actually act as a little bit of drag on the back to keep it loaded against the, the head. If it's correct, again, it'll pull and just track. And you want it just the right size to stay that track. If it's a little too big, It'll track, but then when you try to do some of the fast backwards flipping and other things in the new pattern, it'll actually drag and try to turn around on you. So it's a matter of fine tuning the size of this to be just stable, but not too large to cause a lot of drag. Now the other thing I can think of, uh, some people might have questions about on my FAI setup, would be the RPM I run. Um, I tend to choose to run about 1700 in the hover 
and about 1980 in the aerobatics is where I've I've been running now. Now last year at the nationals in in 2010, I was running about 1650 in the hover and about 1920 in the aerobatics. Uh, but this year I bumped it up just a little bit. The real issue with, uh, or the real question with electrics, honestly, is, is how fast you want to run and, and not run out of battery to get through the pattern. And for mine, I've been very comfortable with that. 1700 in the hover and about 1980 in the aerobatics. It's real crisp for the aerobatics. Uh, I like a little faster in the hover than most people. Some people might only be running, you know, 1600, 1550 even. Uh, but for me, that's just not quite crisp enough. That's, again, sort of a personal preference, just like the, the damn thing is. Uh, so just give it a try and see what you like. I think that's about it for now. I'm sure there'll be other questions. Again, just send them and I'll be glad to try to answer them. Uh, just send it to Curtis Youngblood, Attention Radix Facts, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thanks.